you really want to understand the join diagram of a bolded joint connection? Then this is definitely the right video for you here at the YouTube Engineering Academy. I'm Nico, I'm a German engineer and I will explain to you now the join diagram of a bolded joint connection. Therefore, I consider a concentrically loaded bolted joint connection. The bolt clamps two plates by a screw nut. When the bolt is tightened by the torque TT, the actual pretension force loads the bolt, which clamps the plates together at the same time. Let's have a look at the single components. Both are loaded by the pretension force. The bolt initially unloaded, is extended by the pretension force during the mounting. The plates are compressed at the same time. In the mounting condition, the length of the bolt and plates are equal. Because of their linear elastic deformation behavior, the components can be seen as springs. The bolt is represented by the green spring with its stiffness Sb. It is extended by the pretension force to the elongation EB. The plates are represented by the blue spring with its stiffness SP. It is compressed due to the pretension force by EP. This compression by EP is now plotted in this force elongation diagram. The linear elastic correlation between force and elongation is given by the stiffness SP of the plates. The compression is recorded to the left in negative elongation direction because of the shortening of the plates. The bowl diagram shows the relationship between force and elongation by the stiffness SB. The bolt is extended by the pretension force, which is recorded to the right in positive elongation direction. Due to the fact that the components are in direct contact and that the extension force for the bolt is at the same time the compression force for the plates, so actio equals reactio, both diagrams can be joined together and the joint diagram of the bolded joint connection results. It is characterized by the two hook lines with the stiffness SP for the bolt and SP for the plates. They touch themselves at the top where the absolute value of the force is equal to the pretension force. After mounting the bolt joint connection, the clamping force FC is equal to the pretension force in all gorgings. On the left side of the red dotted line, we can see tensile elongations and forces. On the right side of it, we can see compression forces and elongations. In case of an applying actual force at the bolt head, it can be seen easily that the bolt is subjected to an increased load with an additional extension, which is indicated here by delta E. The plates decompress by the same amount of delta E. According to this change elongations, there arises a new equilibrium of forces within the bolt and the plates. When we put the additional elongation delta E into the joint diagram, we can see that the bolt is expanded by the value of EB plus delta E. Starting from their initial compression EP, the plates are decompressed by delta E. The area of bowl tension increases to the right, the area of plate compression decreases by the same amount. According to the gradient of the green bolt stiffness SP, the bolt force increases to the new level FP total. The bolt force is increased by the additional tensile force FPA. The pretension of the plates decreases by the amount of FPA. In the gorging, there is only the residual clamping force FCR left. Its value is the pretension force minus FPA. That means that the clamping force FC is reduced significantly by the operating force FO. If the residual clamping force FCR drops below the required clamping force, the bolted joint connection will fail. 
the distance between the new bolt force FP total and the static admissible bolt force is the static safety factor S against yield. When the operating force exceeds the admissible load, the bolt will fail due to static overload. When there is a cyclic operating load, shown here by the amplitude FO, the additional bolt force FBA and plate decompression force FPA become also cyclic amplitudes. The bolt is then stressed dynamically. When we plot the bolt force as a function of time, then FB total results in an equivalent upper stress level sigma EU and the pretension force in an equivalent lower stress level sigma EL. Those two stress levels define the medium stress level sigma EM and the stress amplitude sigma EA. It depends now on the fatigue strength of the bolt material, shown here by different Smith diagrams, for different bolt strength grades, if the joint bolt can endure the cyclic load or if it breaks after reaching its fatigue limit. For the sake of completeness, we consider also the load case of a compression operating force. Then, the bolt is unloaded by the amount of delta E and the plates are compressed in addition. According to this, the tensile and compression areas of the diagram change. The bolt force decreases proportionally to the stiffness SP by the amount of FBA to the new lower level FP total. The plates are compressed additionally by FPA, which increases the clamping force in the gorging to a new, much higher level FCO. From the static point of view, the bolt is unloaded, which is not critical for the safety of the joint connection. When there occurs a dynamic operational load FO, then a cyclic loading of the bolt arises that has to be secured by a dyna dynamic fatigue strength verification. With this, we have reached the end of this lesson. Thank you very much and see you again at the YouTube Engineering Academy.